Hey guys, this is Mario from shockingfit.com and today I'm here in Mostar. This is a city in Bosnia and Herzegovina. As you can see behind me, there's this old bridge which is the most famous place in the city. This is actually a place where I studied uh, for college and it's a pretty beautiful place today and it's pretty nice um, place to check out in general if you're somewhere in this area of Balkans in the Europe. So the topic of today's video that I just wanted to come out and shoot for you guys is how much water should you be drinking? And it might sound like a very, very simple question to you, but there's actually a lot more nuance to it than most people realize. I mean, in the age of uh, 2015, 2016 coming up, we're, we're always distracted, right? We forget the basics and a lot of these things will come down to basics. A lot of your success will come down to just repeating the basics nonstop. And I feel like water intake is one of those things that everybody knows, but knowing is not the same as doing, right? I mean, it, it's not enough for you to know if you don't implementing the right habits to make sure that this is uh, being done in your life then you're not going to take the maximum advantage so in this video i wanted to cover some of the basic guidelines also some of the things that i guess m most people don't know about water intake and how to adjust it over time because it's definitely something that needs to be readjusted non-stop and it's not a it's not a consistent intake that you should be taking so let's start off with some basics so first off what is some of the some of the baseline intake for water I use the guideline of one liter per 20 kilograms of body weight. So that's my starting point. And the reason why that intake, I mean, you just can't take a ballpark figure like that and just do that because your body has different demands depending on your environment, on your genetics, on how much you sweat and all these things will definitely impact how much water you do need. So what are some of the factors that we can take into account? Well, let's take two scenarios. So scenario number one, let's say a guy living in Norway during the winter time, it's pretty damn cold there and he's training three times a week doing zero cardio and he just doesn't sweat a lot I mean, it's all air conditioned and he doesn't move much move around much except those three sessions in the gym so for that person probably doesn't even need four liters of water if that person is 80 kilos i mean might even get away with less but let's say for example let's take scenario number two someone living in mexico training six times a week doing two sessions of cardio on top of that and also that person is sweating a lot and there's lack of air conditioning in most places and um, it's just all like all around hectic lifestyle so that person probably will need more than four liters and more, most likely like six or seven liters just to stay on, on like a normal amount to not get dehydrated and why am i talking about dehydration well most people don't realize how easy it is to actually dehydrate yourself i mean i'm talking about optimizing performance here not just about surviving i'm talking about thriving and putting the maximum amount of effort in the gym your maximum amount of performance when it comes to strength and building muscle and losing fat and water is involved in all of these processes and i mean most of our body is made out of water and most of your muscle is also water it's not fiber it's actually water so even a small lo loss of water weight will definitely make a big impact in your performance so we're talking about I mean, starting from 10% dehydration, you're already, your life is in danger. And when we talk about 4 or 5% dehydration, your mental performance is extremely, extremely lowered. So things like ability to focus, like you get sleepy, you get experience like all these like ADD symptoms and all these kind of things. And also the risk of illness and immune system going down. I mean, everything is linked to water intake. And uh, the most common dehydration amount is actually that 1-2%. 1% is a point where you're already experiencing performance declines in terms of cardiovascular stuff and your exercise ter uh, thermoregulation is reduced. So let's say 1% would be something where you already start feeling a little bit of thirst. So even at that point, you're already uh, dehydrated a little bit. So you need to compensate for that water just by simply drinking more fluid, either water or uh, uh, whatever your pr preferred choice of beverages so make sure it's not alcohol because alcohol is actually dehydrating all the other liquids are contributing to your daily water intake so now that we know a little bit about the dangers of dehydration what are some of the tools i guess except the baseline that i just gave you which is just one liter per 20 kilograms how do you adjust that intake depending on your environment all these scenarios so one measurement tool that i use and i got this from lyle mcdonald's really cool guy he's doing like a lot of books he did a lot of books and doing one right now and he's a super famous guy in the fitness industry so his uh, measurement tool is if you're having five clear urinations per day and two of those coming after training so that means that no matter how much you pee during the day five of them should be clear so that means that there shouldn't be 
a lot of yellowish color. I mean, it's not a sexy topic to talk about, but it's definitely necessary in order to optimize performance. So we're talking about really putting in 100% performance, the maximum your body is capable of. So five clear urinations, that's his method. And I've done it. I mean, I've tried that. I mean, it's pretty cool. You just need to be mindful. And with everything, this is pretty much mindfulness is the starting point. So most people aren't even aware of their water intake. You know, they just drink when they feel thirsty. But let's say you're sitting down at a computer all day, you'll forget that you're thirsty, right? You're going to forget to drink water. And that's simply the way the world is set up right now. And we need to proactively work on building these habits rather than just uh, like being blown around like a leaf, right, in the wind. That That's what happens to us when we're not completely focused on these things. So if you don't have the habits in place, water intake is one of the first things that goes away. It's like same as sleep and all these other things. So the Lana McDonald method is five clear urinations per day, two ideally after workout. The method I use myself and the method that is, I guess, a little bit easier is I use urine charts. I mean, I just memorize one urine chart so I can know approximately what we're dealing with here. So I'm going to leave one in the uh, description below. I'm going to put one here as well so you guys can check that out. So a urine chart is simply a chart where it says, okay, this is the color of your urine. This is how much of dehydration you have. Very, very simple. And that's something you can use immediately. And it just takes a few times and you're just going to have it in your mind and you're going to have it memorized. I mean, for guys, a little bit easier. For girls, a little bit harder to actually use this tool, but it's still manageable and it's definitely necessary. I mean, it's not necessary if you're not interested in like super high performance. If you're if you're not that high performer type of person, then you can you can a little bit of uh, do it some estimates. You can just get that four or five liters. But what I'm saying here is that why not take it to the next level? Like why not? take this and just handle it once and for all because once it becomes a habit it just works continually for you it just gives you that roi the return on investment because investing on habits has the highest return on investment it, it's impossible to not get a return from having enough water or sleep and things like this so don't forget the basics that was the point of this video it's a little bit more nuanced than most people think and especially for example for me and for you, if you're traveling a lot, I mean, water intake will be changing and that's something to take into account as well. Uh, let's say being here in this winter, I'm a little bit cold. I'm not going to drink enough. I mean, not going to drink that much water, but let's say I'm going to move to Spain and it's going to be super hot there or I'm going to move to Thailand. My water intake will have to change to compensate for the demands because I might not be air conditioned and all these things. So that's something to keep an eye on. Just one little extra nuance tip there so you guys can optimize your performance. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a comment below as well. Uh, how much water you're drinking right now? Are you keeping a track? track of it how do you do that and that's uh, something i'm curious about so definitely leave that in the comments below if you enjoyed the video as always make sure to click subscribe on the button below and i'll see you guys in the next one greetings from mustang